This is the Stop Time Podcast. I'm your host, Lisa Hopkins, and I'm here to engage you in thought-provoking motivational conversations around practicing the art of living in the moment. I'm a certified life coach, and I'm excited to dig deep and offer insights into embracing who we are and where we are at. So my next guest is a meditator, actor, and playwright, last seen on Broadway as part of the original Broadway cast of Come From Away. He also appeared on Broadway in the 2000 revival of Jesus Christ Superstar, original cast of the Scottsboro Boys, and the original Broadway and off-Broadway casts of Rent. He appears in the recent Paramount Pictures feature film Mighty Oak and has over 25 years of credits that span regional theater, film, and television. You will find links in the show notes to all the wonderful work that he is creating these days as a playwright and everything that he's involved in. But today we're going to talk about Rodney (laughs) and we're going to talk about believing that art has the capacity to heal and provide hope for a better day and a beautiful tomorrow. Those are his words. That's why he's here today. I cannot wait to get into this conversation and introduce you all to Rodney Hicks. Hello. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. My gosh. It is my distinct pleasure. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Where, Where are you calling in from today? Just give us a context. Yes, I am calling in from Denver, Colorado. Um, and it actually snowed for the first time oh. this year, uh, this morning. Yeah. Oh, how beautiful. So yes. what brings you to Denver? Is Denver home for you or? Um... Uh, yes, uh, I am here. My husband runs a theater here. And so we said, I said, okay, let's do this. And, um, you know, we've been here since 2018 okay. and it all kind of, happened in, uh, I guess, a fortuitous way. I was just leaving uh, Come From Away due to uh, being diagnosed with having spasmodic dysphonia. We can get into that a little later. And uh, since then, I've been uh, healed from it, thank by the grace of God in the universe. Uh, and so we've been here. Yeah. And I've just been doing everything remotely, really. Yeah. I kind of wanted to ask you right off the top, you call yourself um, a meditator, actor, playwright in that order. I do. Yeah. So talk to me about how you identify with these roles in your life and, and maybe mm. what the distinctions are and, and also where, where they, you know, intersect and integrate. Oh, wow. Yes. Thank you for that. You know, it's really in no particular order, except that for me, meditation has come into my life, came into my life seven years ago. Uh, my husband has actually been a meditator, oh my gosh, for over 30 years. Mm. And when we first got together 10 years ago, uh, you know, I was so far in between someone who would meditate. <laughs> I mean, I, there's no way that I would have been able to sit still for even a minute, actually, when you really know how long a minute is, right? And it took me uh, the first... I believe three years of our relationship, it wasn't until the end of 2014, uh, after my grandmother passed, that it was Christmas Eve, and I just made the choice to meditate. Hmm. And I had been like dabbling here and there, uh, but I hadn't really took it on as anything uh, important in my life. And I didn't look back. Mm -hmm. And then I began taking uh, Qigong classes uh, in January of 2015. And that really just began this new approach to uh, choosing life and to living life. And it was very much, you know, mindfulness. All of these things start to come into play with meditation. Mm. How has that helped you? navigate what we've all gone through in this global sort of trauma? Oh my gosh. You know, you know, it, it, it's a balance, right? Mm-hmm. Um, even though I'm a meditation practitioner and do all, I have a practice um, for balance and well-being, you know, you will still have those days where you're like, wow, I'm under the bus today, mm-hmm. right? But the difference is that you have the tools now to not live there. And you have the tools to keep above and keep authentic and keep true to your intentions Mm -hmm. and to really not get 
I like to say, swallowed up by yesterdays. Mm. And so and I, I say that because with this pandemic and, and everything in these two years and the reckoning, everything, I had to make a choice as a human being. How do I want to walk in this world as an artist, as a human being? And do I want to call out or do I want to call in? Mm. And that, you know, I, I, and also, you know, as a black, gay, queer, gender non-conforming man, um, that was a lot, <laughs> you know, it was a lot. And I have friends uh, and chosen family uh, of many different races and, and makeups and, and gender, uh, you know. So for me, I had to really sit and learn how to be still. Mm you know, and I had my falls, you know what I mean? And going, oh, why did I say that? Or, uh, and then I just had to go, just breathe, mm -hmm. just breathe. And what doesn't serve you? Oh, social media. Yeah, because it's making you sad, seeing the sadness of the world. What happens if you let go of that? And it took me a year, actually, um, a year and a half. I knew I wanted to depart the world of social media, um, of postings and, and likes and loves, because I was that person who had love on everyone's thing and really mean it, you know, um, or share posts of encouragement or mm. positivity. But then I thought, I don't want to get into toxic positivity, you know, because no one knows the, the energy in which you're posting. So everyone's going to meet it where they're at. Yep. So, and everyone knows what suffering is now, every single person on this planet. So I thought, okay, it's not about, okay, I learned all, I learned all of these things. I'm going to help the world. Actually, it was Rodney, you can help the world by living your life mm. and being kind and learning to have great compassion for us all. What really stands out to me, a couple of things really stand out to me, if it's okay with you to share. Um, one was you you talked about um, this kind of new knowing uh, these tools that you have that yes. of course of course we have in flow and that you know we're Absolutely. not we're not always the same. I love that distinction um, because really what what that speaks to is your awareness. We all have the tools to a certain extent. We have to practice yes. how to use them. But I think what gets lost is is the ability to hold awareness that we have them. Yes, I 1000, I overstand you, <laughs> you know, 100%, yes. Yeah. And it's cultivating the awareness. And again, I, I am someone who has to work on that every day. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, do not hit send on that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or don't write that, you know, because I'm so forthcoming, mm -hmm. right? And so I had to work on, oh, how do I give myself a boundary? a personal boundary mm -hmm. so that I can actually breathe and find those moments. <laughs> and you asked how uh, meditation can relate to the arts as well. Oh my gosh, if I knew what I know now mm -hmm. on how to live life <laughs> when I was 20s, in my 20s and 30s, oh my gosh. But I can't spend time on that no. because guess what? it doesn't exist anymore. Correct. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, yeah. it's like, oh, right. You, we can't really say, I wish I did this. It's like, actually you have right now. Yeah. That's what we have. So in, for me to apply all of this, the compassion, the empathy, the, the art of communicating mm. and kindness. Yeah. As an artist in our world today, I am so excited. <laughs> I am so excited to be in the room with other artists, with other creatives, yeah. and we're meeting people randomly on the street just to say hello. Mm -hmm. It's because I get to put everything that I've learned to practice every yes. single day of my life that as long as I'm here. Yes. And you know what I love? I love, and it's so funny because they're not, they're not elegant words, but I think they're brilliant words mm. and very, very important. I get to. Yes. Yes. 
Yes. You know, we can we can pontificate as much as we want with beautiful words about transcendence and <laughs> latitude yeah. and yeah. platitudes. Yeah. But when you are able to wake up in the morning and simply say, I get to wake up today. Lisa, you know, it's interesting. The first two words out of my mouth every single morning, uh, and that's been for the past uh, four years of my life, has been thank you. When I get up before I leave the bed, I take a moment and I say thank you. Because you don't know what that is guiding you towards for the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just thank you, not even just for thanking for waking up, but thank you for whatever is presented to me today. Yeah. And I'm going to look at it with, you know, there's a saying, be grateful for everything, you know, and it is kind of, you know, you can go, oh gosh, really? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, again, at 47 years old, I'm about to turn 48 in March. I understand that now. You know, and I believe in our 20s and 30s, there are some people who who get that right away. Mm -hmm. But for me, that wasn't the case. But I'm like, wow, at 47, I get to actually choose how I want to show up in the world. Yeah. And 2022, I get to really choose how I want to show up in rehearsal rooms, how yeah. I want to show up on a stage. I, I, it, it's you know, come from a way I meditated every single, before every single performance. Uh, during rehearsals, people, you know, we'd be on break and like, where's Rodney? He's meditating. <laughs> you know what I mean? And because I had just begun that practice. Mm -hmm. So it was like every chance I got. Yeah. Um, but, and you know, when you first begin this journey, it's very, you know, you don't know how to smile. You don't know how, you know, you just kind of I'm trying to be perfect is right. what you think you're doing. But actually it's the imperfections that make us beautiful. Mm -hmm. I, I'm so with you. I am like, so with you. I'm also hearing that sort of distinction between um, no longer having to be the light, but rather to be the lighthouse. Woo, woo, that's, yes. You know, I mean, that, Yes, you know, um, it takes the pressure off, actually. It really does. Um, and I, for me personally, um, it, it does. And it, it's, you know, I spend, I spend about 80% of my time alone by myself. And I had to learn how to be by myself mm. in order to do that. Right. Because as a writer, you know, it's very solitary until you share it and then you collaborate. And uh, and I just love being in that world. But I know that I also ha also have to have a balance mm -hmm. of, oh, OK, make sure you engage here. Make sure you engage there so that you're not just off in your own little corner, of mm. the you know, mm -hmm. um, and and that gives me really great peace and solace you know, um, but I love creating. I love uh, being amongst artists and uh, getting off of social media. What that has helped me to see is why I do what I do, mm. why I love to do what I do, as opposed to, let me show you why I love what I'm doing, which is there's nothing wrong with that because I believe that our world does need that. Uh, yeah. and certain, but I'm like, I don't want to be that in this time in my life. 100%. Um, I just want to do the work. So many of us have, so many have um, opted to, and maybe aren't, don't recognize that they are living a default future. Ooh. A lot of the folks rather Lisa than a Hopkins. created future, right? But, but yes, think Hopkins. about it. <laughs> think about it. I mean, it's like, if I do this, then I'll get that. If I do this and when you're successful, it's even easier to live into a default future because it's comfortable. That's where our, um, that's where our strengths are actually where our weaknesses lie. Yes. 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 You know? Because it's all instinctual, yeah. right? Yeah. As opposed to, oh, if I'm living from this deeply rooted place of groundedness, mm -hmm. you can sometimes be a little off the ground, mm -hmm. but it won't be as long <laughs> of a duration as it was prior. Yeah. You know, 
it's, and I also limit my phone conversations. Mm. <laughs> you know, I, you know, it's, I'm very, I don't talk on the phone much, uh, but when I do, I like to do a lot of listening uh, because if someone's going through something, uh, it's not about how do I help them fix it? It's, oh, actually they just want me to be a compassionate ear and I'm just going to listen. Yep. Because nine times out of 10, I have been there, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And you are helping in that way. And so, um, and I try just, I, I don't mm, cut the word I try. Um, I love it. I get to be there for others because I know how to be there for myself. I get to love others because I've learned how to love myself. And that was a long journey and process. And we can't expect anyone else to be exactly where we are. So it's how do we meet? So it's really, I learned, I'm gonna meet this person exactly where they are. Yeah. And I knew the only way for me to do that is to be off of social media and to really just be present in the world and show up. Yeah. Whatever that means. Yeah. Hell yeah. So I'm, I'm going to ask you to put humility to the side for okay. a moment. And I'm going to ask you to tell me beyond what is eminently clear. I mean, you know, we can all research you and, and see your gifts, your external gifts. What would you say are your unique gifts? Oh, wow. What are my unique gifts? I think the capacity to learn, uh, meaning the capacity to learn from mistakes, the capacity to not be afraid to hit the back wall mm. in an artistic room. Uh, you know, I say that a lot of artists, you know, we're very, uh, oh, I don't wanna actually go full out here because I haven't really, you know, or, I'm afraid of what someone might say of me if I just make choices and, and take risks and, you know, and I like creating and being in art unafraid. Um, I think what I also have to offer is kindness. I believe that kindness is one of the most powerful strengths we can have in our human makeup. Mm. Yeah. It's interesting about kindness because kindness is felt, not seen. Ooh, again, why I got off of social media, right? It, it's like, oh, I don't have to keep posting about this. Yeah. Right? For me, it has to be about the work and about how can my work and my life living help someone else mm. today? I'm very excited actually about uh, whatever this future will be, but more than that, I'm more excited about where I'm at right now. How, how do you want to be remembered? Ooh. <laughs> how do I want to be remembered? I would like to be remembered by my heart mm. and resilience and perseverance. Mm. you know yes yes yeah you know it, it, it's you know I could go deep and like you know and and uh philosophize but I think at the end of the day I'm always learning and I want to always strive to be the best version of myself possible. That doesn't mean perfection at all. <laughs> it means striving to be the best version of yourself that you can be. Neuroses and all, honey. You know, striving to be the best version of myself that I can be. Yeah. No, absolutely. And I never thought that, you know, again, 20s and 30s, I would not have... I think I would have been, I know that my answer would have been how I would be remembered uh, as a great artist, as a, you know, it would be very uh, surface, right? 
as opposed to internal, what you don't see. Yeah, you know, and, and I think that's what excites me about being an artist in our world today. Yeah. I just think that we are more powerful than we than we know. We're stronger than we know. Yep. And we're actually more compassionate than we can give ourselves credit for. Indeed. I actually want to live a long life. And however long I live, right? But it is constricting. And for me, it's unhealthy for mm -hmm. me personally. Yeah. And it, it's, I don't know. I, I just, when I made that decision to go, this is how I'm going to live my life. And I'm going to be here right now. Man, again, like I said, it took me a year and a half to actually do the action of deactivating my account on Facebook. Yeah do the action of, oh, Instagram, you are not on my phone. I don't see you. I don't know you exist any longer. Mm -hmm. To like literally say, I'm taking from now all the way through 2022. Yep. I don't know if I'll go back on in 2023, uh -huh. but, but what I can control is I am making the choice to just be, remove myself from there. Indeed. At least for that year. Can you finish this phrase? Most people think Rodney Hicks is, but the truth is. Hmm. Most people think Rodney Hicks is positive all the time, but the truth is I have my ebb and flows. Yeah, fair enough. Love it. And now let's do this little, um... I call it rapid fire. It does not need to be rapid. I'm going to say okay, what, what makes you. <laughs> and you just say, you can answer however you want, either the first thing that comes into your mind or sometimes that's fun. Um, but uh, let's just play. Are you up for it? Mm -hmm. Cool. Yes. So what makes you hungry? Food. Yeah. All kinds of food? Food. <laughs> food i love it what makes you sad mm. homelessness what inspires you joy mm. what frustrates you stuckness yeah what makes you laugh what makes me laugh inspiration for sure inspiration mm -hmm. art inspiration oh that's cool why do you suppose that is why does it make you laugh because it's joy and it's a release of endorphins and it's creativity and it, it I just light up <laughs> you know um commonality as well mm -hmm. oh, i love that i love that um what makes you angry oh what makes me angry rudeness mm. and finally what makes you grateful life all of it every single moment every breath i take i'm grateful because, you know, there are people who don't wake up, you know, and um, again, I, I said this to a friend yesterday, I'm 47 and I'm turning 48 in March and all I can be is grateful. Yeah. You know, yeah. To be here now with love. Beautiful. What are the uh, what are the top three things that have happened so far today? Oh, um, the top three things that have happened so far today. <laughs> I think you know it's only been like I've been up since five, and it's uh, now what twelve thirty. Um, 
this podcast has been wonderful. Um, walking my dogs, uh, taking them on a hike as, as it was snowing was really beautiful. Um, and receiving another self tape request, <laughs> um, you know, I mean, cause I'm all the way out here in Denver, right? And I've just been really grateful to continue to receive a consistency of audition requests, you know? Um, and so that makes me smile. <laughs> it makes me smile because there was a point where I, I was like, forget acting, I just want to write, you know, or forget the arts, I just want to teach. And now it's like, you know, I love acting. You know, I love it all. And I just want to continue to show up in the world as the person I am. Yeah. Amen. What are you most looking forward to? <sighs> Prosperity. Mm. Prosperity. Rodney, it has been such a pleasure speaking with you today. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with me. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this time and um, our communication and energy. It's really wonderful. Indeed. I have been speaking today with Rodney Hicks. Thanks for listening. Stay safe and healthy, everyone. And remember to live in the moment. <laughs> In music, stop time is that beautiful moment where the band is suspended in rhythmic unison, supporting the soloist to express their individuality. In the moment, I encourage you to take that time and create your own rhythm. Until next time, I'm Lisa Hopkins. Thanks for listening. <laughs>